let's go over hooking. So we've talked about the heel hook before. We really haven't talked too much about the toe hook, but we're using the same muscle groups for both. And it's a way to make yourself either more efficient or do a more strenuous climb because you don't have handholds available and using the lower body in order to reach handholds that might be out of your reach if you didn't use the lower body. And we're using different muscle groups. So it really allows us to engage the lower body and use those huge muscle groups. The hamstring is a huge muscle group and it's a pulling muscle and it allows us to get our weight up over a hold. It allows us to reach out further without swinging off the wall. So types of climbs. So we're looking for climbs that are greater than vertical, usually, not always, but that's really where hooking techniques come into play is when we start going greater than vertical. So we're talking about greater than 90 degrees, something where you can't use friction climbing or, or friction climbing is not as useful. It's not that you can't use it. So these steeper climb angles that are greater than vertical, those overhangs where we can really use the lower body to become more efficient. And so that's where we start getting into passive versus active hooking. So passive would be using hooking to take some of the weight off your hands, your grip, your arms, allow those limbs to recover or at least take some of the weight off. And then active is using the heel hook or the toe hook to advance the climb, to get to a, a foothold or a handhold that may be out of reach. And it allows us to keep our body weight close to the climbing surface. So when to use a heel hook? So if you're at a ledge, you can use a ledge to get up over. So using the heel hook on jugs those are huge holds even a toe hook heel hooks toe hooks both can be used on large surfaces like jugs knobs edges so this shouldn't just say heel hook this should say a hook so you can use it on all those surfaces heel hooks and or toe hooks Hooking to improve efficiency, so you can put a greater amount of weight on the legs, taking that off your arms if your forearms are starting to get blown out. And so that less weight allows you to rest. And you can even take all the weight off sometimes. It just depends on the type of hook used, the angle of your body. But you're using that leverage from the hamstring, those pulling muscles to alleviate some of that stress on the upper body. And we've got to worry about swinging off. This is called barn doors, where you swing off of a hold. The hooking techniques can allow you to really stay on a hold. And I know we already talked about toe versus heel hooks, but let's talk about what part of the shoe is actually being used. So the toe hook, we're using the top part of the foot and then with the heel hook we're using the bottom part of the heel that's why that heel on most climbing shoes are it's really pronounced and it's got a lot of rubber on both the toe area and the heel and some shoes are better than others and we'll talk about that in just a second as well what shoes what you should look for if you're going to utilize these techniques because not all shoes have the same amount of rubber so this video shows you the difference between heel hooks and toe hooks. And this one shows how to a, a hand foot match. This is actually used in conjunction with mantling, but a hand foot match is often used with heel hooking, toe hooking. So climbing shoes. You want shoes with large amounts of rubber around the heel. If you're going to do a lot of heel hooking or any type of hooking really. And if you're going to use toe hooking, you want a large amount of rubber on the toes and a really tight fit. You don't want those shoes to move around at all, so you're going to have to go with a really small shoe 
It gives you a really tight foot fit where you don't get any movement. So if you have a shoe that's designed for heel hooking, it's probably going to be have the same amount of rubber um, up around the toes too. It's going to be made for all forms of hooking in most cases, but that's really what you want to look for. Comparing those shoes, looking on the, the amount of rubber on the toes versus the heel, how far does it wrap around, that's going to be important. So active versus passive, we already talked about that. Um, passive, we're just really becoming more efficient, taking the weight off the upper body, uh, getting into rest positions, maybe even to the point where we can drop an arm, maybe not both, but drop an arm by using a heel hook or a toe hook to allow the upper body to rest and then active heel hooking or toe hooking are for those more difficult routes. I know that's a repeat slide. Heel hooks on a ledge. There's an example. We've got the heel dug in and using that ledge to pull so that this arm can reach for a hold. So here's the example of a heel hook combined with a pinch. So she's pinching this huge jug here and really matching up the hands and the feet on the same hold. So that's a heel hook to hand foot match. Toe hook, notice how all this rubber wraps around the top part of that shoe. That's the reason you have a lot of rubbers to use that toe hook and they're just using the toe hook itself on that image. And here's a toe hook, and they've actually reached around and they've got, they're crimping on that little bit of edge there on this, on this hold, but it's a hand foot match because we're on the same hold. So that gives you a rough idea of how these can be used together used to become more efficient and really engage the lower body on these less than vertical walls. And this is what I was talking about. See, this is on an overhang. This is less than vertical here going up again, less than vertical. So we've gone up to this point and you start to get to this overhang. This one's actually on a, a vertical wall, but the uh, hold is out of reach. And so they're using the heel hook, using this hamstring in order to use this as a pulling force to be able to reach up further and swing themselves up. 